Whew, it's bright out. If only I had something to cover my eyes. I'm gonna try to squish in a second video today. This morning I filmed that video about all the different animals here in the Galapagos Islands. This afternoon I wanna maybe try to do a landscape photography video. There's a bunch of sea lions on the beach here in Gardner's Bay and I don't know if I can do a landscape photo, but I'm gonna try. So um, come join me as we try to make a landscape photo. We just landed at Gardner Bay. This is one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Fine white sand, blue clear waters, and sea lions chilling on the beach. Yeah, it doesn't get much better. But from a landscape photography standpoint, it's tough. It's flat, there's not a whole lot of anchors, but luckily, I think we can use maybe one of the sea lions as an anchor to a foreground to a photo. So, uh, yeah, let's give this a whirl. See if we can find a sea line to sit still long enough. So I think this is gonna be harder than I thought it was just because one, there's not, well, there's not a whole lot of sea lions on the beach and two, they're moving like crazy. So adding a wildlife element to this photo isn't, I don't think gonna be possible. But what I have tried to do here in the Galapagos Islands on this trip is trying to do more environmental portraits of the wildlife, trying to put the animals in the landscape they're living in. So. I'm trying to do that right now as well with the animals, trying to do some minimalist photos where I'm using the sand to blur out almost everything in the frame except for their eyes peeking out and stuff like that. But there are some rocks ahead. Fuzzy, are there rocks ahead? If they are, we all be dead. And I'm going to go, uh, I'm gonna go check them out, see if there's a photo up there. So it's simple and there's no sea lions, but I think I found a pretty nice composition here, just with a square crop, this beautiful white sand, and these rocks in the foreground. I'm uh, filming a video you've already seen before for the 15 stop ND and I like the 15 stop ND for certain situations. This, this definitely isn't it. I think right now I just want one or two seconds exposure and uh, hopefully a little bit of drama on this shot. So I'm going to wait until the sun comes down a little bit more and grab this. Oh, and there's a mockingbird in my bag. Get out of there, bud. Hey. Color me corrected. I actually like the long exposure better. The minute and a half or two minutes I did with a 15 stop filter came out awesome. Really like a wreath reel. It makes this decent looking scene, this beautiful looking scene, but hard to photograph looking scene look just phenomenal. Uh, I did dial it down just in case with a 10 stop filter and it looks good as well. I did 25 seconds and uh, I did use the six stop and do some like one and two second images, but I like the drama of 25 seconds. I'm surprised, but pleasantly surprised. Now we got a half an hour until we're legally obliged to get off of this island. So I'm gonna walk down the beach with a 16 to 35, a filter on, 
and see if I can get a wildlife photo. Speaking of wildlife, a turtle's head just popped out of the water right there. Okay, since the video is a little bit short today, I think uh, what we're gonna do is take you into the editing studio. So we're about to hop on the Zodiacs, head back to the boat, and we'll finish this episode in Lightroom. I'm gonna show you how I edit this photo. Isn't it obvious? So I'm no longer in the warmth of the Amazon nor the Galapagos Islands. I'm here in the future in Arizona where it's so cold at night that you need a down jacket. And I'm coming at you from the future to talk about a couple things. I said I was gonna edit the photo at the end of this video, but honestly, the edit was very, very basic. So I'm gonna save that for another video. I've done edits in the past. It's really just a simple Lightroom edit. I am gonna talk about two things here before I end this video. The first is I'm gonna talk about ISO and wildlife photography and how I use it. And the second thing is what I use the four and five stars for in Lightroom. Let's get into it really quick and I'll try to be quick. And I know I talk too much. In fact, I'm doing it right now. Into it. Um, so, how I photograph wildlife in terms of ISO. So, for me, the most important thing about a wildlife photo is it needs to be a sharp animal. You can have the greatest moment with an animal, and if it's not sharp, it's just, you lose that, you lose that power of the image. You want it to be sharp. So for me, ISO is secondary. As long as it's not like obscene or messed up, I don't really care if there's noise as long as it's sharp, as long as it captures that moment. That Cayman photo that Jody got in the Amazon that was unreal, that's like ISO 12,800, but none of you guys noticed that because it's such a powerful image. Basically, when you're photographing handheld, you want your shutter speed to match the length of your lens. What I mean by that is if you have a 400 millimeter lens, you want your shutter speed to at least be one four hundredth of a second. When you're photographing wildlife, those animals are moving. If you're photographing squirrel monkeys, they're hopping around. They're going to be quick. So you probably need an even quicker shutter speed. I like to double it. So if I'm shooting 400 millimeters, I like to be one eight hundredth of a second or even one one thousandth of a second. So when we're walking around or cruising around and I don't know what I'm about to photograph, I have my camera set in aperture priority mode and then I have the ISO in auto. But on the Canon cameras and most cameras these days, there's a minimum shutter speed option for the ISO and I have mine set at one one thousandth of a second. And what that means is the shutter speed will never go under one one thousandth of a second. It means that if something pops up, you can just focus on it, like literally, you can just focus on it. That's the only thing you need to do is focus on the animal, compose, and fire the trigger and not really have to think about anything else. Of course, you also kind of have to think about the exposure compensation. Is your scene really black or is it really white? Do you need to compensate plus or minus one? You have to think of those things as well. But with wildlife, I want to take as much of the decision making out of my head as possible because things happen really quickly. And then if you get some time with the animal, you can then switch to manual mode and adjust for the situation. If you're photographing a bison in the snow, you're going to need to be overcompensated by a couple stops. And if that bison walks towards you in the snow and more black fills the frame, more of that black animal fills the frame, your camera's gonna get confused if you're shooting in aperture priority mode, even if you're exposure compensating. If you get the exposure right in manual mode and it walks towards you, you're good. So I'm in aperture priority mode, auto ISO. When I'm walking around hand holding, I get the photo. Once I've got the photo and I realize I have time, I pop over to manual mode and I, I make the adjustments. I think it's so important to play with your camera. Sit in your room, spend an hour just playing with the settings in your camera so that you get comfortable with it so that when you have an animal with you, you can do it all without thinking. Okay, so enough about ISO. I know a lot of people are isophobic. They're scared of jumping the ISO. Don't be. I used to be isophobic as well and now I'm totally woke. So 
don't be afraid to jump that ISO. Okay, let's talk about the stars in Lightroom. If you don't know what I'm talking about, essentially in Lightroom you can rate your images one star to five stars, or actually zero stars to five stars. And the way I do that is zero means nothing. Essentially it means you can basically delete me. One star means I want to look at that image really quick, but maybe not want to edit it. Two stars means I want to edit the image. Three stars means it's share worthy. I mentioned that in the video a couple days ago. I keyword anything two or above. So that leaves us with four and five stars. They're my portfolio, essentially. That's how I keep track of my portfolio. Four stars is what I call my destination or my niche portfolio. So every destination I go to, I like to have 10 to 12 images that are like the showcase of that destination. So when I go somewhere like Ecuador, I'll tag images four stars. That way, if a client reaches out to me and says, hey, Brandon, what do you got from Ecuador? I can go into Lightroom, I can go down to the filter section, and I can click rated, and then hit four stars, and it'll show, you, show me all my images that are rated four stars from Ecuador. That way, I can then just find those images really quick and send them off to them. If I revisit a, a destination in the future, like I did here in Ecuador, this is like my seventh time in Ecuador, I then go through and I rate all the images I think are fours. Then at the end of the trip, I'll go and check the fours from Ecuador and I'll make sure there's only 10 to 12 images. So if there's 16, I gotta cut four. And it's pretty cutthroat and it's pretty harsh, but it's a really good way of learning, you know, how to really narrow down your images because that is a really important skill set as a photographer. The five star images, those are my annual portfolio images. And I do it kind of in the same way. If I have an absolute favorite from the year, I'll assign it five stars. And as the year progresses, I'll eventually get to 12 images, hopefully. And if I go over 12 images, I then go through the five star images and I have to cut them. So if I get 13 images, I've got to choose one image that's no longer in that annual portfolio. And then I can cut that one image down to four stars. It's again a really easy way to track my best images of the year. That way if a client or a magazine or somebody comes to me and says, hey Brendan, what's your best images for the year? Or I'm trying to put together a calendar or a blog post, I can just hit five star filter and see the best of the best images from the year. That's what I use four and five stars for. I think it's what most people use it for. I just have kind of like a very specific way of doing it, I think. If you're curious, I don't think there was a five star image from Ecuador. There was two images, the one of the flamingo in the lagoon and the Nazca booby that are probably close to fives. I've made them fives for now, but I don't think they'll make it by the end of the year. I guess we'll find out. And um, you might notice that I've got a new laptop. You wanna know what that is? You're gonna have to wait to find out. Oh, and I've got other new gear. So yeah, anyways, that's me saying that this video is over and that there's a couple gear review videos coming up um, fairly soon. They should be fun. New laptop, new filters, new lens, new other stuff. Lots of new gears coming up here in Arizona. And I guess I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.